F1 2019 The Game comes out on the 28th of June. However, because I'm a spoiled, bold, idiot YouTuber, I got my hands on a early access press copy of the title. In this video, I'm going to give my honest first impressions of the title, hopefully allowing you to make an informed choice when it comes to buying the game for yourself. This video is sponsored by Antline Audio's ModMic Wireless. The ModMic Wireless features low latency lag-free capture, full 16-bit, 48kHz sound quality, dual mic modes and 12 hours of battery with charge and use functionality. I've been using Mod Mics for over a year now. They sound great and they let me use my non-gaming headphones as gaming headphones. You can check out the Mod Mic website by clicking on the Mod Mic link in the description. Okay, so F1 2019 is effectively F1 2018, but with some slight improvements. Codemasters are very much in the EA FIFA territory with this title. E every year, there's a new game. Every year, there's some slight changes, some slight improvements, uh, but generally a positive progression. Now, to be fair to Codemasters, they do more work, I believe, in changing the title and evolving it than, than happens to FIFA. So, you know, they do do more there, but let's face it, this is this is a slow plodding turtle of progression when it comes to their Formula 1 games. That's not a bad thing, though. The, uh, the actual single player is more enjoyable to play. The AI is more enjoyable to race against. The environments and track graphics look much more believable. In fact, they've actually done a really good job on the sort of ambience of the circuits. I think a lot of it is just using uh, a sort of environmental fog very cleverly. And the uh, copious use of birds. I've, I've never seen so many birds in a racing title before. I'm not talking about grid girls. They're banned from Formula 1. You're not allowed them anymore. But birds in the sky. I really do get the impression that Codemasters accidentally employed an ornithologist. And his single mission with this title was to put as many birds in it as possible. Why not? It, it, it's nice. You can't drive into them though. So... Uh, it's debatable whether they add much to the game. But they make the environment feel more alive and it is actually a very immersive title for a 2D game. Of course, if it had virtual reality, it would be even more immersive. But you know what Codemasters are like. Don't want to don't wanna go too far out there. No, we won't do VR. So um, unfortunately, none of that VR goodness here. I won't whinge about it too much. I just grumble to myself you know, amazing technology that puts you in a car, perfectly suited for driving games, really makes you feel what it's like to be a race driver. Don't put that, don't put that in the official Formula One game. Rant finished. Now I think a bulk of people playing this will be looking to play it for the actual single player because this, you know, it's, it lets you sort of reenact the F1 season. And the best way to really think of the Formula One games, the way I've kind of got my mind around it conceptually, is to think of them as a Formula One role-playing game. They're not... The, the, the hand in the physics and everything about it is is not anywhere near what you find in your driving simulators, your sort of AC, R-Factor 2, iRacing, race room. You know, if you want to feel what as close as possible to what it what it's actually like to handle a Formula car, you, you're going to need to get one of those proper simulators. But if you want to have a kind of role-playing experience of what it's like to take part in an f1 season then that's what this this game is for and the they've done a nice job with f1 2019 in terms of the single player with the sort of career mode where it does have uh, a little bit of sort of cutscene story stuff a sort of superficial rivalry what can i say i guess there's no other way to put this but i'm sorry I'm sorry for ever giving you the common respect that all races deserve, because you don't deserve it, neither of you do. Um, with the, with the cutscenes actually nicely voice acted and nicely animated, um, which does actually immerse you in the game, again, better than the previous titles. But though it's there, unfortunately, it's, it's really superficial. Uh, it, it's, there's not that much of it, and, you know, it's, it's like something from a 90s video game if not less, because there's not that many of these sort of cutscene elements to it. I think Codemasters should have just put... They should have just invested all the single-player effort into that rather than all the other nonsense mechanics they've got. 
Though, I mean, I guess they carried the, the other mechanics from the previous game, so they're like, well, we might as well shove them in this. They could have, they could have done a really nice actual single player that really coaxes you through this, even as someone that's not necessarily into race driving or not necessarily massively into Formula 1. They could have actually done something that would have drawn a gamer, a general gamer, through the single player and made it a way more uh, enjoyable title as an actual game. And I got really excited when I first started playing it because I thought that's what was happening. Because for the first, like, five or six things you do in the single player, it, it seems like that's happening. I was like, oh, great, fantastic, an actual single player in a driving game. And then and then it kind of just peters out. Um, and also what you notice very quickly is that if, if you've got the game on, like, a moderate difficulty or too easy difficulty, you absolutely rinse everything. But the single player like stuff continues on as if they're like it doesn't what the actors are saying or what the characters are saying does not coincide with what actually happened. The commentary is it doesn't coincide with what actually happened. It's like you've just won the race by twenty seconds. Driver of the day goes to this other person or we mention this. It, it doesn't make any sense. So uh, yeah, it's massively superficial. And that's that's what I noticed with all the game's design in this, the actual gameplay, is just really... It just feels like inconsequential, kind of superficial to everything. It's like a, it's like a tacked-on game design that... It's just not engaging. If, you, if you're a gamer and you really appreciate solid, deep game design and game mechanics, mechanics that involve you and make you think about things properly... And this is just, it's just dull. I mean, a, another good example is when the reporter's interviewing you. It's obviously something they could put in the box as being like, you were, you're a race driver, make sure you say the right thing. But as the player, you just have this weird multiple choice thing without that many options or real consequences or the ability as a player to have that much freedom to really be controversial or anything or, you, you know, there's, they could have put, an, there could be an actual mechanic there that requires some degree of skill that involves you in an interesting way or, or just or just don't have a choice there and just present it to the player in a way that's more interesting it, it just so all in all personally as a jaded old miserable git i just find the game mechanics the actual gameplay mechanics in this outside the driving that co-master put on to be really dull uninspired and don't they don't really add anything to the single player from my perspective. I think if you were like 12, you might really enjoy everything they put in this, and maybe that's the target demographic, so that's fine. I Just keep in mind, guys, I'm an old, miserable git, so who knows? Maybe some people like it, but for me, I still think those that, that part of the game is really lacklustre. But then, to sort of counteract that, I, I have to say, the actual drive the end drive of the vehicles and the core mechanics now are at a point with the f1 titles where it is very drivable uh with a with a steering wheel as well you you know it's got the force feedback tells you what the car's generally doing the self-aligning is there um to keep the back of the car in order you get a reasonable amount of feel for the mid corner load and the front end if you if you go into corners too hot stuff like track texture vibrations curbing and everything so, so all those, the, the basic handling of the vehicles and the general approach of the bread and butter of the game is actually quite nicely executed. Of course, it's nowhere near what you find in a proper simulator, but it's more than good enough that you can now, as a sim snob, play through this, do the racing against the AI, and actually not be massively frustrated by the car just randomly snapping out for no reason or and a reason that just makes no sense at all. If you were going to be really critical of the handling, I would say the the one thing that really stands out is the brake bias in this game doesn't like you have to even if you set the brake bias to 50%, the back on the brake is still really really stable. It's very hard at low speed to get the nose to turn in on the brake. You kind of have to chuck it in. Um, so that's with the brake bias on on 50. So if you were to say compare it to something like i racing, which is like a thousand percent sensitivity if you put the brake bias to 50 you're gonna do a, a, a 360 no scope vehicular pirouette that's i racing then then f1 is like 0.001 sensitivity to brake bias so 
the jet, I mean, and this kind of carries across to all the handling natures of the vehicles in this. It's it's very mushy. It's kind of a, if you've got a, a, a Volkswagen Beetle with road tyres, strapped a little bit of downforce on it, and then put a Formula One engine in it for the speed. The speed is right. Uh, it kind of sticks, but everything is very mushy. It's a, mu it's, it's a mushy P simulation of a Formula car. But it's not, for the most part, it's not frustrating. Once you've got used to it, it's not... Yeah, it's not frustrating. It does have a reasonable amount of depth to it. You are applying general techniques that you apply in some of the more realistic simulators, like gently modulating the brake to nose the car around some of the longer corners or the lift-off oversteer, uh, using a bit of the understeer to carry more momentum into corners in certain ways. It does have the mechanics there that you generally expect from a realistic simulator, but it's then mushified. <laughs> but... Not in a way that's frustrating. That, that's what really matters. So I, I really do have to give a lot of credit to Codemasters for getting the physics to that point with this. I, I, bearing in mind, this is a mass market, cross-platform driving game. So credit where credit is due. So it's just a nice gradual improvement over the previous game. I would say the most interesting aspect of 2019 over 2018 will be the multiplayer. Now, unfortunately, can't really test that properly with the press copy because, uh, well, you know, how many people have got the press copy? Probably like, what, 10,000 people, if that. Can't really test multiplayer properly with that. So we're going to have to wait for it to actually come out in the mainstream to really see how that pans out. But looking through the menu and all the options, it does seem they've actually much better integrated some of the eSport aspects of, of stuff, the, the sort of driver license and what looks to be some kind of a, a ranking system um, and, you know, and all, all that goodness that's required to actually make jumping multiplayer work properly. You have to have some kind of matchmaking ranking stuff. I don't know to what extent it's actually going to be executed to and I don't know how well it will work. I don't know how well the netcode will work and everything else and how much they've changed that because, as I say, we haven't been able to test that. But to me, that is potentially the most exciting part of this game and the, the part of the game that will really make or break F1 2019 for my personal enjoyment of it as someone that mostly plays a sort of high-end PC sims where at a fundamental level the, the handling is better and the, the, you know, they've got VR and everything, they're just, they're just better simulators. But from a gameplay perspective, the multiplayer aspect of F1 2019 as a cross-platform game as well could be really, really interesting. But you're going to have to hold on to your horses until we can actually test that properly. So really, um, I mean, for the most part, I have to say, this has surprised me. Um, mostly because on the, I'm playing this on the PC. When I launched it, it actually ran pretty well. The default settings were actually pretty decent. I mean, the UI, the general UI is actually all right for navigating the main, the main gameplay options. If you go in to, to, to change force feedback wheel settings and stuff, you have to go through multiple layers of menus, which is a bit of a pain in the arse. I did find with the Fanatec CSL Elite that I'm using with the uh, the F1 Esports bundle. Check out the review on our channel of, of that if you if you want to see what we're using there. Um, it came up in the game. It was set up reasonably well. I did have to change the, the wheel rotation value to line up to Codemasters' randomly low value that they always use in their titles. But all said and done... Oh, no mouse cursor on the menus. <laughs> Don't know what that's about. But, but, all, mostly... It was a case of sort of just getting in and actually driving it. The The general stability of the game has been really nice. Uh, some tracks, for some reason, do have uh, the occasional sort of jump and stutter. I don't know if that's because of a graphics setting that I'm running. I've not messed around with the graphics. Everything's pretty much on max. So that'll be worth investigating. I really hope in the actual release version of the game, that's not a problem. But other, other than that jump stutter, which I'd say happened on some tracks maybe once every 20 minutes or so um i haven't had any game crashes everything kind of just worked and those of you that have played previous codemasters formula one games on pc will know that that was not the case so this is this seems a lot more stable and a lot more polished which is probably what you'd expect for a title that gently plods along like a tortoise on the plains getting better and older every year um so, well, where does that leave us, ladies and gentlemen? Where does that where does that leave us? Um, for this first impressions, it leaves us with me saying that 
of course, if you were a fan of 2018, I think you'll really, you'll really like the improvements to this. It is an improvement. It's a progression. It's good. Um, I would say if you weren't a fan of 2018 and you felt you needed a bit, bit better single player, you know, a little bit of polish here and there, then you'll, again, you'll probably quite enjoy this. If you're a sim snob, you'll probably still feel that, you know, it's a Codemasters Formula 1 game. It doesn't, it doesn't really scratch that itch and you we won't know until the multiplayer is done uh, uh until the multiplayer is active online uh if that has something really compelling for people that are used to multiplayer racing because that that will be the make or break point i think for people like me that are more on this sort of snob sim side if you've not played a formula one game for a long time this is definitely the best one to actually jump in and play if you had a big break from the formula one title say you played like f120 12 or 13 or something and then you were like oh i'm kind of done with this now and you had a big break this would be a good time to to actually give it a go again and and give it a you know it's it's uh it's a much more solid stable game in that regard i can't believe i'm mostly being positive here ah oh, what's happened what's happened so i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm gonna say well done codemasters for the most part we'll wait and see the multiplayer the last game's multiplayer was on PC, just didn't work. So I'm I'm hanging on bated breath for that. But if the if the multiplayer ranking stuff works and everything, this is actually a very good all-round title. It's not perfect, but ticks the boxes. It ticks them boxes. So uh, yes, there you go, guys. I, I hope you found this interesting and useful. We'll be live streaming this soon so I can give uh, immediate feedback to any questions. Ask any questions in the comments. Uh, shout abuse at me for saying something you disagree with. Whatever makes you feel better. I don't care. Um, and yeah, there, there you go, guys. Click the like button or don't. Subscribe or don't. Thanks for watching. Happy tea drinking. And goodbye. <laughs>